Today we're going to look at compositions of functions and how they relate to inverse functions. Let's get started. So here's a problem. Given f of x is equal to this thing, and given that g of x is equal to this thing, we want to find now this composition function of f of g of x and g of f of x. Now, I'm going to run through this. If you need a little more guidance, uh, check out our composition of functions playlist. So. What we know is, uh, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to do a little highlighting. I have g of x here, and I know this is my g of x function. Okay, and then I have my f. Over here, I'll put that in green, and here's my f function. All right, so what I like to do is I like to work from the outermost to the innermost. So first, write down your f function right here. Okay, so we're going to write down f of x is equal to x over 2 plus x. Now what I'm going to do is then I'm going to look to the inner function. And what this is basically telling me to do is it's basically saying, here, take a look at this, watch, f of x, watch. Here's the red. Red, that's green. Promise I'm not colorblind, but maybe I am. Um, and here's the blue. So in other words, what I'm trying to say here is that we're going to take the g of x function and we're going to plug it in for x in the overall f of x function. So that's why I work with starting the, start writing the f of x function first. And then what I'm going to do is everywhere I see now my x, I'm going to have to plug in this whole thing, this whole g of x. Okay, so it's going to get a little complicated. So f of x is going to be equal to now 2x over 1 minus x. That takes care of this whole x. Then divide that now by 2 plus the same thing, 2x over 1 minus x. Wow. All right. So now that's what we have, right? So now what we should do is we should try to simplify this, okay, if possible. So what should we do to simplify this? Well, first let's start off by getting a little, getting us, getting us a little space and but what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, try to just combine these two terms in the denominator. Okay, I want to try to create one solid fraction in the denominator. So I realize that in order to add these two, I'm going to have to have common denominators. So what that means is that I'm going to have to multiply this value, all right, by 1 minus x over 1 minus x. All right, I'm going to multiply that by the 2. Now what happens then is I get this now, watch, f of x is equal to 2x over 1 minus x all over then. This now becomes 2 times 1 minus x over 1 minus x plus then this thing, 2x over 1 minus x. All right? Now what I can do, I don't really need these parentheses here, but now what I can do is I can combine these two fractions because they have the same denominators. Okay? So now let's do this. Let's now take f of x is going to equal then, leave the numerator fraction alone. So just write 2x over 1 minus x. And then, now that I have no room, we're going to move it over here. Get rid of this little highlight for now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine the numerators here, right? So this is really just now 2 times 1 minus x plus 2x all over then 1 minus x. Okay, why don't we distribute here a little bit? It's getting a little confusing, I'm sure. So maybe what I'll try to do here is I'll try to put a different color here for that overall big fraction, okay? So that was this line, and that was this line, or which was then this line. All right, so now uh, distribute the two here. So we're going to then get f of x is equal to 2x over 1 minus x, all over then, change that to blue in a second, this is 2 minus now 2x plus 2x, all over 1 minus x. Okay. Now notice what's happening down there. The x's now will cancel, because they're opposite signs. So now what do we have? Now we have f of x is equal to 2x over 1 minus x, all over, 2 over 1 minus x. Now, remember, whenever you have now 
what I tried to do was I tried to get a fraction in the numerator and a fraction in the denominator. Okay, simplify it as much as possible. Now what you have to realize is that you have two fractions inside of a fraction. It's like inception of fractions. So what we now need to do is we can now take the numerator fraction. So let's write that out. 2x over 1 minus x. And we can then multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator. So basically, instead of doing the numerator fraction divided by the denominator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the numerator fraction times the reciprocal of the denominator fraction. So it's going to look just like this times 1 minus x all over 2. And whoa, wait a minute, look at what happens. These two are the same. They're being divided essentially by one another. That cancels. Wait a minute, that 2 cancels with that 2. And huh, look at that. This is simply now equal to, and I'll write it below, this is now simply equal to f of x is equal to x. Okay? That's what that is. So this was the answer to the first to the first one. Guess what we get to do next? We get to do the same thing for this one. All right, let's erase and do it. How are you guys doing today, by the way? I hope you're doing well. I hope your class is going well. And who could not be having a good day right now doing all this math? So now what we're going to do is we're going to do, I'm going to highlight the G. I'm going to highlight the f of x in green now. So remember, start from the outside, move in. So first write your g function. So we're going to have now g of x is equal to 2x over 1 minus x. Okay. And now what you're going to do is everywhere you see an x, you're going to have to substitute in what this is saying. You're going to have to substitute this whole thing. All right. Of f of x. So let's do it. So g of x is equal to then 2 times, oh boy x over 2 plus x, all now divided by 1 minus now, oh boy, x over 2 plus x. Huh, okay. So let's write this little blue thing, little blue line separating the two, two pieces, okay? The numerator and the denominator of the overall fraction. So now what we're, I'm going to look to do is I'm going to look to try to simplify it, okay? And I realize here in the denominator, again, I'm going to use the same technique. I want to try to add, in this case, it's being a subtract. It's a subtraction, right? right? But I want to try to combine them so I know I need common denominators. So whatever this denominator is, I'm going to multiply it by 1. But I have to then do it like this, 2 over x over 2 over x. What am I saying? 2 plus x, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore, over 2 plus x. Okay, because this essentially, when you look at this, this is like 1. And multiplying a value, multiplying a value by one doesn't change it. So, g of x will equal then two times x over two plus x, all over now. Oh my goodness, isn't this fun? This is then going to be two plus x over two plus x minus then x over two plus x. Let's draw that blue one. Okay, keep everything nice. Now, what I want to do is combine the denominators because, or well, I should say, combine the whole denominator. All right, I'm going to combine these two fractions now because they have common denominators. So what happens there now is going to be, we're going to get g of x is going to be equal to 2 times x over 2 plus x. All over then, this now works out to be 2 plus x minus x all over 2 plus x. Remember, I just simply added these numerators, and then I just needed one of the denominators. Okay? I added the numerators, here they are, and then I just took the denominator and plugged it in. All right? Now notice what happens there with the x's. They go bye-bye. Positive x, negative x go bye-bye. So what are you left with down here? So you're left with g of x is then equal to... And what I should probably do as well... Why don't I just multiply that 2? I just try to make a simple fraction out of that. So the numerator now is going to be 2x over 2 plus x. All then divided then by uh, 2 over 2 plus x. So let's put in that blue line again. And now I'm down to the same spot as I was last time, right? 
I have two fractions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the numerator fraction and multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator. Okay, so let's do that. So we've got g of x is equal to 2x over 2 plus x times 2 plus x over 2. Notice what happens. The 2 plus x go bye-bye, and here the 2, and wait, whoa, whoa, no way. No friggin' way. It's the same thing? Yep, it's the same thing, right? So, what does the answer tell us about the relationship between f of x and g of x? It tells us that they're inverse functions of one another. That's what it tells us, okay? For example, if you had f of f of x minus 1, this would just be simply equal to then just x, okay? So when you take, when you, the inverse function, all it does is it undo, it, it basically undoes the f function, all right? So this is kind of just proving that to us here, that since I, these two are basically then, what we, what I'm saying is that this function is the inverse of this function, and this function is the inverse of this function. Okay, you can also prove that to yourself just by doing a little math. Watch, just take one of them. I don't care which one. Just take f of x, right? Write it over here. f of x is equal to x over 2 plus x. Find the inverse of this, right? So first call that thing y. So just erase it, call it y. And now everywhere you see an, a y, put an x. Everywhere you see an x, put a y. So it's going to look like this now. x is equal to y over 2 plus y. Solve this now for y. Okay, do a cross multiplication here. Remember, this is really like x over 1, so you can do cross multiplication. So this is then x times 2 plus y is equal to y. Distribute the x, okay? So we get 2x plus xy is equal to y. Now what I'm going to do, give myself a little more space. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to then bring the y's to one side. So why don't I bring this, subtract this basically xy and over to the uh, left uh, right hand side excuse me so that cancels so what I'm left with now is 2x is equal to y minus xy I want to pull out a common y here between these two terms so what I can do then is I can write it like this y times 1 minus x look if I redistribute the x now excuse me redistribute the y it would give me y minus xy okay so I know I'm right and then divide this now out 1 minus x from both sides okay 1 minus x, and what we're left with now is we're left with y is equal to 2x over 1 minus x. Now, why don't you make it look nice? Just bring them, switch the sides, and now lo and behold, right? Well, first, before we're done, before we're done, don't leave it as y here. Change that because we found the inverse. So change that now to f of x minus 1. And now take a step back and look. This function now is the same thing as this one. You see, we just proved that this original fun that this function is the inverse of that one. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope this helped. Please remember to help us out and subscribe if you can. Um, and if you can't, maybe you can hit the like button. That'd be great. And if you can't do that either, we still love you. Take care.